Hey everybody and welcome back to Algebra 2 Online. Uh, so the plan for today is to talk about, um, really actually I could go to the example that I kind of skipped over before. So um, we did this problem before and I'm going to talk about how, um, I said it in the previous video, but um, in the, there was really one piece that I was kind of not explaining, um, just on purpose because it would be too much to explain in one video. but. Uh, you're going to learn about something uh, called a removable discontinuity, uh, which is actually involved in uh, this graph. And uh, it's a very little, very little thing, but a very important thing at the same time. So, uh, but to start off, I just want to do another one of these uh, kind of limit problems. So if, uh, if you think about the graph of sine of x, it looks like this wave function like that. And um, it just goes on and on forever. And so uh, if we asked, you know, what is the limit of this graph um, as x goes out to infinity, so basically we're checking for those horizontal asymptotes, um, since it just oscillates back and forth forever and ever and ever, it's never approaching anything out at infinity, right? And so there are things like this, um, you know, where we just say, we actually say DNE does not exist. Um, basically, there's no solution. There's no value that this function approaches out here, which really just means that there's, you know, in our context, there's no horizontal asymptote for um, that graph. So this is the actual definition of uh, removable discontinuities. It basically says um, the two limits that you get from the left and right hand sides. So, you know, when we approach a point from the right, we use that notation. When we approach a point from the left, we use that notation. And it's saying those two things are equal, okay? But the function is not uh, defined or not equal to those limits. So basically, you're coming into a point like this one right here. I come in from the left along that blue part. I come in from the right along that green part. But you can see that there's this hole in the graph. It's literally just like not defined. Um, the, this is what it means to be a removable discontinuity. There's like a spot um, where it just literally doesn't exist, uh, but just one spot. And so those limits equal the same thing. You know, whatever uh, this value is, like if I kind of overlay this on a graph or something, um, you know, if that's up at two, their limits from the left and from the right both equal two but the f function value there is undefined. Um, and rational functions always either have a vertical asymptote, which we've seen, um, one of these removable discontinuities, and they also can have both. Um, that example that I'm actually going to do here in a second, uh, that one is uh, actually one that has both. And, um, and basically, so I'm to this point right here, you get these things whenever you have uh, zero divided by zero. Um, and that can show up in these rational functions, uh, which I'm gonna show you some examples of today, but um, anytime you'd ever get something that looks like zero over zero, then that's where there's actually like a hole like that. So the way to find these things is basically kind of these three kind of steps right here. So. I would always just, you need to know the factors of the thing. So start by factoring everything out. So on this one, we're going to get x plus 4, x uh, minus 3 on top. And then we're going to get x plus 4, x plus 1 on the bottom. And then if you divide out common factors, you can do that. That's OK. It's just that when you do that, um, so when I divide out those x plus 4s, right? Um, you know, I, I just have this part left over. Really, honestly, the better symbol for this next step would be this, this symbol. So this is like the approximate symbol. And I'm saying that this thing is approximately equal to that. They're not really equal because I did do something algebraically important there where I deleted this part from top and bottom. Um, but when I do that, okay, what I've done is any of these factors that like cancel out like this are where you're going to get um, a removable discontinuity. The number, I guess, that gives you 0 over 0 there, right? So in this case, negative 4 would give you 0 over 0. So what really you're not seeing in the graph 
And this is actually a fault of, uh, like, Desmos just can't process this. And actually, if you move your cursor on Desmos, you would notice that it gets confused right here. But, like, you can't. It's such a small one-dimensional thing that it just basically has to map the graph through it. It, like, doesn't know how to deal with actually showing a hole at the spot. But it literally looks like a curve, and then there's a hole, and then the curve just picks right back up. But it is a one-dimensional little issue right there, only at negative four. Because at negative four, you would have zero over zero, and it would be undefined for a different reason than um, this vertical line, okay? And that's what this point is. So the any of the remaining factors on the bottom are always going to yield your vertical asymptote. So, um, you know, right here, we can see that if x equals negative 1, that's going to be a problem. And that's why we're getting um, the vertical asymptote there of negative 1. And so, basically, in any rational function, the first thing you should do is just factor. If terms cancel out, those are going to give you your holes. And then your remaining factors on the bottom are where you're going to get um, vertical asymptotes. And the top doesn't really do too much. I mean, it could give you the, um, the y-intercept, right? Because uh, the number you plug in here and get 0 in the output um, is going to be like the y-intercept. So you can use it for that. But um, Oh, sorry, zero, so I meant x-intercept. So if you plug in 3, right, you get um, 0 in the output. So it could give you an x-intercept if you plug in 0 here. Um, but that's about all the top does. So this was that example that I kind of skipped over before. Well, they skipped over this important part. So we said before that it basically equaled 1 over x plus 2, but I would actually mean that uh, it's approximately equal to 1 over x plus 2. Um, and then in that case, you know, now we could change our graph. We still have definitely a vertical asymptote at negative 2. Um, but there's a removable discontinuity also at 2. So at 2 right here, you would have gotten a 0 over 0 kind of thing in there. And so that actually needs to be there. So the proper graph looks like vertical asymptote with a dotted line. This curve is fine. This curve is fine. And then a hole, and then it keeps going. Um, so that little inside part should really not be there. Um, that needs to be, that's again, just like an issue with um, the graphing program. Desmos just can't um, handle that super small issue um, with what it outputs on the computer. So I want to do just like one more. Um, so this one is kind of weird. Um, and because you can't really factor sine, right? And all these other ones you could factor out and cancel something like I did here um, and here. But on this one, you kind of just need to think about where you're going to get 0 over 0. So I can factor the bottom. Um, if I do that, right, I'll just take an x out and get x plus 3 on the bottom. And so, you know, the weird points are going to definitely be either at 0 or negative 3. And so the question is, um, how would you get 0 over 0, OK? Um, and so if this is the actual graph of sine. And over here, I have some points labeled, right? And so if we check these two points, these two x values, um, and if sine equals 0 at either of them, then we're going to get one of the removable discontinuities. So you probably can see it right there, right? If you um, plug in 0 to sine, you get 0 out. And so that means that you're going to get a removable discontinuity um, at x equals 0, because you're going to get the 0 over 0 thing. Um, and then if you do, um, if you go over to negative 3, um, negative 3 is about right here. Uh, oops, sorry, over here. Um, so you can see that negative pi, if you plug that into sine, you get 0. Um, but you, negative 3 would be like a little bit below right here. It's not going to be 0. That's the important thing, right? This is not 3. Um, this is not negative 3. 
So this number will be fine. So we're going to get a vertical asymptote at the other point, x equals negative 3. And I wouldn't ask you guys to graph this thing, but just um, if you're curious, um, you can go and plug it into Desmos too, but um, you do literally get this asymptote at negative 3. All right? um, there is a hole at 0. Okay. And then the graph does this kind of weird thing where it sort of bends down, but it kind of at a weird angle, it kind of bubbles and then curves back up here. And then this part is like doing something like that. Um, it's a pretty weird looking graph. But um, really, I just wanted to show you kind of how if you can't factor it, you still can analyze those discontinuities. Um, and it's literally just two things to kind of keep straight. Vertical asymptotes always will just be coming from the factors on the bottom that would give you zero on the bottom that are left over. Then removable discontinuities are places where you get zero over zero. So, um, you know, at, at zero for sine, you get zero, and this factor certainly has a root of zero. So at zero, you'll get one of these weird whole things like that.